Thanks for watching the Daily Debate Thursdays with Tagreed Hassin here on Nile TV International. Well, uh, tonight is a very uh, special day for Egypt. It's a very uh, dear project to the hearts of all Egyptians. It's a sense of belonging to this country that has been manifested in, in, in every word and uh, in, in every Egyptian who uh, had uh, been determined to make the new Suez Canal project happening on solid ground. So congratulations on the day of the anniversary of the new Suez Canal, a very important project that has been Egypt's gift to the whole world. And while we are celebrating the anniversary of the new Suez Canal uh, uh, project, uh, we would uh, like to emphasize more uh, highlights of this important project, not only uh, as a gateway to the world, but how it has uh, managed to bring about foreign investments and how it has left an impact on the whole world, not only uh, on Egypt. So. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, this important project and also uh, talking about a very important topic as well, which is uh, digitization. The whole world has known the uh, impact of digitization, especially during uh, COVID-19 challenge. And then it, it is going to become, a, or it became actually a style of life. How are we going to go through? How, is, how are we heading forward? And uh, is digitization going to be part and parcel of our daily lives? Uh, this is uh, the topic and also uh, a very interesting article that was written by Dr. Ahmed Abdel Tawab uh, Sharafuddin, professor at Munufeya University, who through his input with us uh, is always shedding light on those important topics, digitization and higher education, our universities, our students today, and digitization and exams and more. Dr. Ahmed, thank you so much for coming. Well, it's always a pleasure to be with you, Tagri. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Professor, and uh, we'll be talking about that and more on the daily uh, uh, debate for tonight. Uh, first, let's uh, see more about uh, the uh, Suez Canal uh, project. Uh, Suez Canal, and even before we see the report, Dr. Ahmed, and uh, <clears throat> if we talk about digitization, right. uh, the, such projects all over the country, like right. uh, the new Suez Canal, also the administrative capital, uh, and more projects throughout, Right. Uh, definitely right. digitization is going right. to play a role here right. and reflected all, all on our uh, projects right. uh, not only in, in Cairo but also uh, all, uh, throughout the, the governments of Egypt. Right, right. I think you are absolutely right to read about that. You started our talk today by talking about how this concept which is digitalization how it is part and parcel of our daily lifestyle nowadays and this is Absolutely right. And look to what's happening today in our country. There are a lot of major projects happening in every part, in every single part in Egypt nowadays. There is a digitalized vision as well, and this is something very critical. This mm -hmm. is part of Egypt's vision 2030. That is, Egypt will be completely, when here, here we are talking about all the services, all of them will be completely covered by digitalized services. And why do we have this? Because there are strategic goals and objectives at the end. Mm -hmm. One of them is just to make Egypt to be a very competitive country when it comes to the competitiveness concepts around the world. So mm -hmm. today, we are not living as we were before in the past. Today, the situation is different. The world today is open, and as you were talking about Swiss Canal inauguration anniversary, this is something very critical because Egypt also, as we talked before, has a soft power. Egypt already is a strategic country in different aspects. We keep talking about education because this is one of the critical soft powers that Egypt already is still developing. Yes, there are challenges, as we were discussing before, but again, this is one of the strategic way and tool to push the country forward. Uh, definitely, and uh, those projects all over the country has put Egypt uh, on the international map. Right. Uh, see how the world received uh, right. the uh, inauguration the new Suez Canal, see the impact. Right. It has been making headlines throughout, and uh, I, I would remember also one of the headlines that came uh, on the right. independent like it's Egypt's gift to the world yes right. it is right. oh, and, and what a gift right. that is going to facilitate uh, uh, the daily uh, lives of citizens right this is this is absolute right and Egypt has been always in this way it is for serving humanity at the end it is something that can help not just at the local level but also the international level mm -hmm. uh, let me just tell you to read that few days 
ago, I just read the statement. Um, the president held a meeting with the prime minister, with the minister of higher education, with the minister of education, talking about that there should be something like a digitalized expansion mm -hmm. for every single aspect of the services here. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the lifestyle, so the lifestyle today is different, and it will be dramatically changing after that. Uh, let me just give you mm -hmm. one example when it comes to the way of shopping. Today is different from the past. So today, if you would like to just make any kind of purchasing, you mm -hmm. can just do that online. So uh, today you have the digitalized infrastructure. Today we are talking about major projects in comparison with also the uh, dramatic changes happening for the educational process. Yes, this sense of uh, digitalization that uh, Professor Abdel Taweb is talking about definitely has more than one impact on our lives. It's not only uh, on higher education, but also it reflects on uh, the housing uh, projects, for instance, uh, talking uh, smart education. It also reflects on a great project like uh, the New Suez Canal for uh, the logistical as well as ship services to so see how digitalization can also play a very important role in the development of uh, such a project. The new Suez Canal uh, project uh, operated after a year according to the directives of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi instead of uh, three years and the revenues had increased actually and this canal and seven tunnels were under construction simultaneously since the president gave the directives. Uh, it includes building the city an industrial zone, Technology Valley, and notice uh, Technology Valley, which is right. co-relevant to our topic uh, tonight, talking about uh, digitalization, digitalization in, in the field of services and logistics in the ship and the vessel industry is considered to be also uh, one worth it of attention. Uh, let's see this report and we'll be back. Egypt celebrated on Wednesday the fifth anniversary of the inauguration of the new Suez Canal. The Suez Canal Corridor Area Project is a mega project in Egypt that was launched on August 5th of 2014 by President Abdel Fattah Hassisi. The project's aim is to increase the role of the Suez Canal region in international trading and to develop the three canal cities, Suez, Ismailia, and Bursaid. The project involved building a new city the new Ismailia city, an industrial zone, fish farms, completing the Technology Valley, building seven new tunnels between Sinai and Ismailia and Bursaid, improving five existing ports and digging a new canal parallel to the Suez Canal. The new canal has increased the canal capacity by allowing ships to sail in both directions at the same time for a greater proportion of the canal. The project transformed the canal cities into an important trading center globally. It also built new centers on the Suez Canal for logistic and ship services. ICC announced that the new Suez Canal project will operate after a year instead of three years. The project's authority said that the revenues of the canal will increase from $5 billion to $12.5 billion annually. The new canal, channel and the seven tunnels were under construction simultaneously. Constructions of the rest of the projects, which include building the city, industrial zone, technology valley and fish farms, began in February 2015. It's مصر دولة عظيمة 
مهمة جدا ولها حضارة ممتدة لأكثر من 7000 سنة. في سنة بذل المصريين جهد كبير قوي عشان يقدموا للعالم ولمصر هدية من أجل الإنسانية، من أجل التنمية، من أجل البناء، من أجل التعمير. أذكر التاريخ لمصر أنها تصدت وجبهة أخطر فكر متطرف إرهابي لو تمكن من الأرض لحرق الأرض وهي اللي تصدت كمان بأزهرها وعلمائها لتجديد الخطاب الديني حتى يتناغم مع عصره ومحيله القناة الجديدة أول خطوة من ألف خطوة لا يمكن أبداً حيستطيع أحد أن ينال من مصر نتمن دفعناه وبندفعه مش عشان خاطر مصر بس زي ما قلت ده عشان خاطر الإنسانية كلها Yes, as His Excellency the President has elaborated, it is a step out of a thousand steps. Egypt is a great country, His Excellency says, and in one year Egypt has managed to present to the world a gift to humanity. It is a gift to humanity, a gift on the march of sustainability and sustainable development. It is a great triumph uh, for Egypt, the new Suez Canal uh, project. Indeed, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. this is the way of communicating with the international, with the world community. Um, it's, a, it's a golden opportunity for marketing Egypt as well. It is a way of how can we create new different jobs and to create job opportunities. It is a way of how can we reflect Egypt's image outside Egypt. Mm -hmm. So there are strategic goals when it comes to Suez Canal. Historically speaking, it has a function. And nowadays, it's not just for the lo logistic perspective, but also for some other purposes as well. We are talking today of how can we attract and how can we bring international um, companies and corporations here. And today, we are talking about Google companies. They would like to open a branch here mm -hmm. in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Microsoft companies. They had a branch already in another Gulf country. And today, they would like to move to Logistical relocate. Logistical hubs. So uh, there mm -hmm. is something happening on the ground when it comes to the strategic goals for the canal. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about having a technology valley uh, in the canal and uh, mm -hmm. uh, fish farms, mm -hmm. of course, that, right, uh, that right. began earlier right. and uh, reflecting on uh, the rest of other important projects right. all over the, uh, the country. Right. But it is uh, quite interesting to right. see how in Egypt smart cities right. all over the country, right. you find uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, the, the issue or the magic of technology let me say, or digitalization present. Uh, absolutely. You just mm. said the right word. It's mm. the magic of technology. Mm -hmm. And since we are talking, you, you remember Tagrid times when we were talking about smart education, smart yes. universities, and mm -hmm. smart devices in and, our uh, lifetime. And, uh, and also artificial right? intelligence. Right, and, right. Uh, and then, so today, mm -hmm. we have already the first of its kind, smart city. It's mm -hmm. Port Said city. Now, mm -hmm. they, it's officially declared as a smart city, the first city in the republic mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then it will be followed by Suez city and then Ismailia city as well. Mm -hmm. It means that that all the services that we are talking about will be covered under technological services. Mm -hmm. And why do we make all of that? For many reasons. One of them is to fight corruption. Because nowadays, when we use technology, you're going to have a perfect service, a very fast service, mm -hmm. and at the same time, a service without corruption and this is what we are talking about mm -hmm. and today we would like to connect our country yes. with the international market as well yeah. so we wanted to be able to do that if we are not digitalized in many aspects ways yes let us recall uh, the moments of honor and pride when uh, the new Suez Canal uh, right. was inaugurated right. and uh, it was great happiness actually right. uh, all over the country uh, for a project uh, that is going to be immortalized and uh, as the president always said that the Egyptians are considered to be heroes right. remember when this project
project was announced and right. uh, how all Egyptians, right. even uh, those uh, who can't afford, right. the very simple Egyptians, right. how they had dedicated some uh, money, how they had right. invested. Everybody was thinking about giving and about right. uh, mm -hmm. this sense <coughs> of belonging to the country, how to share. Right. So those are the Egyptians. When you mm -hmm. have a, a big project, you find all the Egyptians hands-on for a noble cause. That's absolutely right. All of them um, are involved. And, and this is not something um, unusual. I mean, this is mm. something very expected. Historically speaking, we have to remember what happened during um, 6th of October War in 1973. At yes. that time, mm. there were no crime whatsoever on the days of the war. Mm. So it gives the sense that Egyptians, and that's in my humble opinion, I have a deep conviction that Egyptians during the tough and the hard times, they shoulder the responsibility and um, they um, are up to such a challenges that probably they might face. And I think, in my humble opinion, it did work at the end. So this is what we witnessed before. And today we are just moving to a new era and a new stage. And I'm very confident that Egyptians also will be able to uh, move forward. One of them, when it happens, it's the economic. And this is not my words, but this is the numbers and the statements coming from the international agencies. They are talking about that Egypt is already now on the right track when it comes to the economic situation. I understand. And I know that some people will say Dr. Ahmed is just out of the context. This is not my words, but I'm just telling you that this is the statements coming from accredited international agencies. Definitely, that and uh, there uh, is highlighting Egypt's rankings. Right, right. Uh, so there is trusted um, agencies here, and, mm. and we have to follow what they are talking about. Um, when it comes to, for example, another different aspect, it's the education. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking before, that education probably is the core nerve when it comes to all the development process happening in our country. Yes. It's connected with tourism, it's connected with security, mm -hmm. it's connected with development, it's connected with the most critical part which is awareness. Uh, definitely. And maybe COVID-19 has been uh, a right. time to reflect right. more on, on our lives and how to make our lives easier, how to facilitate <clears throat> our lives even when we don't meet. Right. And right. Uh, this had made us resort more to technology, mm. even in the media. That's, that's you, you, right. you, you would find right. that right. Uh, right. Uh, in the field of journalism, uh, Everybody was, uh, was in command uh, of a piece of news. Right. If, if he is in a spot uh, that, that can uh, right. handle, handle that, a piece of news uh, that is credited, of course. Right. Right. So through our mobiles, which right. is through, through our smartphones, through digitalization, again, and smart technology, we can achieve uh, a lot. A short break and uh, let us uh, remember together the spirit of uh, that important day in the history of the nation, namely uh, the anniversary, the inauguration of the new Suez Canal uh, project, uh, a very important project, uh, the gift of Egypt uh, to humanity, where all Egyptians were really uh, proud. Let's watch. <laughs>
Yes, you are Egypt, you are the, the greatest uh, uh, country in the world as uh, uh, the children had uttered. That was the spirit of Egypt on that important day with the Nobel cause, and namely inauguration of the new Suez Canal and uh, an implementation of a project where we find all Egyptians hands on. Throughout six years, uh, Dr. Ahmed, there has been many achievements all over the country in the different fields, in the field of education, right. in the field of housing, right. uh, also in the field of, uh, of infrastructure, how to modernize Egypt's right. uh, infrastructure all over the country, the bridges that has right. been right. built in order right. to, to save time right. and facilitate uh, lives of Egyptians. The president is concentrating also on uh, the human capital on right. humanity. Right. That's why building the human being right. and right. building the human potentials uh, of, of Egyptians has been at centerpiece. Right. Um, I, I think this is quite a bit essential. Mm -hmm. uh, building human being. This is something very important. Mm -hmm. And here we mean building the skills of the um, individuals. Yeah. Um, Two days ago, there was a meeting, as I said, between the president and the minister of higher education. They were just talking about how to find different technological approaches in order to develop the skills of the students and in order to move the country on another unusual track. This is something very important to mention and to talk about. <clears throat> so when it comes to the accomplishments, um, the past years well we would probably we should be aware about what's going on for example let me just tell you the international technological centers in institutes and universities across the country today we are talking about international governmental schools um, in the past the stereotype that we have about governmental schools were negative. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to have another different style of governmental international schools. By the way, let right. us congratulate the Sanawi Amma, all right. the Sanawi <laughs> Amma uh, graduates uh, right. uh, in Egypt. And um, as you're saying, Dr. Right. Ahmed, that right. today we, we have another perspective right. for education right. in Egypt. Right. Right. And this has been reflected, you know. Right. It was a bit challenging right. at the beginning, right. like students were not used to uh, resort to their taps and uh, they were uh, used only to uh, right. the uh, traditional way of right. doing it. Right. However, today and with uh, right. digitization, right. digitalization right. working right. on, it worked. Right. That's very true. And let me just mm -hmm. read through such a wonderful show. Let me just also send uh, a sincere advice for all the students who finished the general secondary stage nowadays. Um, for the upcoming years, it's not going to be something as we used to have before, traditional, but it's mm -hmm. going to be something unusual, something innovative. And for all the students, if you don't have creativity, the creative sense, if you are not innovative, if you are not talented, if mm -hmm. you don't have the passion for what you're doing for, then it's going to be very hard to find a job opportunity. Yes, very hard to compete and to be present. <clears throat> Today, mm -hmm. major companies, they are not talking about having certificates as we used to have before, but mm -hmm. it's more about the skills that you have in order to help the company or yeah. to help the corporation. So the mindset today is different. And look to what's happening today. When I wrote my article about digitalization and the digital wave, it was based on a personal experience with my nephew and with my niece. Yes. So what happened is I found them nowadays that they have channels on YouTube and they can collect and make subscriptions for different uh, channels as well. They can move the crowds and the audience and they can make their influence influence and believe it or not they are 12 years old boy and she is like nine years old something like that so there is something here different um, and as we were talking about technological devices and tablets today we have the secondary stage 
all of them nowadays they are using tablets. I know that there are some complaints mm -hmm. and they probably will say, you know, Dr. Ahmed, we are not aware about what's going on, but this is very usual. Mm -hmm. This is very expected. And in every new um, movement happening in our society and in every new development, we should have such a resistance. But at the same time, we have to go forward because this is the only option. We were really happy to find uh, the whole experience successful right. and to see Egypt moving forward and to see uh, this sense of, uh, of happiness all around when it worked right. because uh, right. this has been really an achievement also for, for the government working right. on such a very important project, namely developing uh, the educational system in the country developing a higher education. Well, uh, more than one achievement in, in, in more than one uh, field and more than one uh, sphere in the field of digitalization, uh, digitalizing Egypt is uh, considered to be a very important uh, uh, project for the whole country. Uh, six years of achievements in, in other important uh, domains, six years of making a difference. Let's watch. <laughs> أنا بقسم بالله اللي اتعمل فيك يا مصر ما يتعمل في 20 30 سنة President عبد الفتاح السيسي 6 years of achievements that we aspire. development man.
of making a difference. We're still talking digitalization and uh, digital uh, transformation in the country and talking also about uh, digitalized generations. We are before a generation that is digitalized. Where to? This is the headline actually right, of your right. article, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Right, right. Mm. Today we have in Egypt more than 100 million living in this country. Um, we have 40% of the total number of the population in Egypt, they are the youth. Mm -hmm. um, and let me just tell you Tari, that 80% of the youth, 80% um, of them, they are internet users. So it means that there is a human capital that we were talking about before, and such a human capital is a strategic point for Egypt's economy and for Egypt's a rich cultural background as well. Um, we are talking today a huge number of internet users and we are talking about those who are creating nowadays applications electronically. We are talking about youngsters and the youth who are trying to find different international job opportunities. And I met some of my students who are working nowadays in European countries and in the US, they found jobs by using the internet. Yes. So the idea today, it's not for entertainment, it's not for welfare and prosperity, but it's a serious target that is to find a job opportunity. And if you just, if we have a closer look at the situation when it comes to educational institutions, we have today international educational in institutions for that purpose because we would like to create that sense of high level of competitiveness that can make the students at the end to find what they are looking for. Um, we were talking before about education. Today, and as you mentioned in your introductory part, we are talking about COVID-19 era. Yes. Today we have different styles of education, Tari. That was different from the past. Yes. So today we're going to have something which is called a self-learning style of education. Mm. We have the far learning style. We have the self-learning style, and we have the hybrid education. Mm -hmm. um, the, the council, the higher council of Egyptian universities, they made a decision a few weeks ago that for the next semester we're going to have hybrid education. We didn't have that council. What before. is hybrid education? So, in, know, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. hybrid education means that to have a combination between the traditional educational style and the electronic style as well. Mm -hmm. And as you can just see that sense that at the end, the direction of the drive for educational process is to transform the whole education to be electronic. So we would like to make that in this way because at the end, we are, as I said before, we are witnessing unusual digitalized wave that will affect every aspect in our life. Education is the core point here. Yes, education is always the, the, the core. Uh, right. And uh, we're working hard on that uh, important file uh, as, as right. a country, uh, talking smart education. Right. What does it take uh, to, right. in order to compete right. uh, in a dig digitalized world today, right. in your right. opinion? Right. Well, number one, and I think that Egypt has successfully done that, mm -hmm. is just to create infrastructure. Yeah. And there is already today a, a wonderful, that's in my humble opinion, mm -hmm. a wonderful uh, digitalized Base. um, uh, mm -hmm. baseline mm -hmm. or infrastructure, if I would say so. Um, there is today um, um, a plan in order to make the, the, the prices for the internet to be on the lowest level in order to open the service for everyone. Um, there is today the fourth generation, it's called the VDSL for the internet as well. And there is a plan in order to move forward the fifth generation in the upcoming few months. So infrastructure, this is number one. We are talking about Egypt's digitalized identity, the ID of Egypt. And what it mean and what does it take? It means all the information of the people will be completely in electronic systems. This is number one. And today, Tagrid, we are talking about a law that can protect the personal information for all the people through the online. And why do we have the law? And, and believe it or not, one of them is just to attract the investments. Yes. Because when we have laws, mm -hmm. when we have laws that can protect the personal information of the individuals and for the companies and for the institutions, that can work. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and, and then after that, 
um, after the infrastructure that we have, the second point, and this is, I think that this is our role, it is the awareness of the people. Because today, as I said, people would like to see something positive, mm -hmm. and they need people, they need someone who can just explain that. A few days ago, I was talking to a family members, and they were just complaining about that they feel chaos when it comes to the electronic systems in education. Then when I was just trying to tell them that what's happening Maybe because here, they are not used. They the, are not used. They are not aware. Uh, applying um, this uh, sense of technology. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as I told mm -hmm. you before, in every new If you movement, master the tools, uh, and if you, everything is and going... And if you are aware about this, if yes. you have the awareness and the knowledge, then your perspective will be different. This is probably can yeah. be uh, the critical part. What is really interesting is that when we are talking uh, digitalization, we're right. not talking about digitalization only for scientists right. or uh, right. for specialized people, oh, yes. but we're talking uh, digitalization for the ordinary mm -hmm. and the simple citizen. For right. instance, uh, we find efforts today to boost uh, digital trade, right. as right. well as the, the electronic system of different agricultural holdings, for right. instance. This right. is something also very interesting. Right. Uh, our farmers are going to have what we call the farmer uh, smart card. All right. So <laughs> this is going to be also something, uh, 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 something very catchy, you right. know. So right. we are addressing other categories. No, that's absolutely right. Mm. And uh, let me just give you my personal experience. So uh, a few weeks ago, I tried to renew a new ID card um, um, and then it happened electronically there is no need nowadays to go to um, uh, the civil office in order to get a new ID card but all I have to do is just I created an account on the website and it happened in I'm just to give you one example. The other example that, and that's again from my personal interaction, um, I wanted to buy some stuff from the internet. It happened completely by using electronic services. I know, I know that some people probably would say, Dr. Ahmed, this is not happening for everyone. I know that, but it happened at the end because mm -hmm. when we just see the, the beginning stage happening like this, then at the end, we will be able to see a dramatic change happening for the whole society. Yes, definitely. And also uh, trying to invest in what we have. Uh, it is right. always great to mention artificial intelligence because right. this is the future. And how are we going to invest in uh, artificial intelligence? How are we going to have a full uh, a picture right. of financial as well as health services? By the way, you were talking to right. me about right. uh, a health system story <laughs> that right. uh, proves how <clears throat> digitalization in medicine is very important. Absolutely. Mm. So a few days ago, I went with my dad to a hospital in Cairo. Mm. And I found that everything in the hospital was uh, just controlled by digitalized system. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to diagnose my dad's case mm -hmm. and it happened by technology. So what happened is we found that, the, so we got a very accurate diagnosis and it was very fast. I know it was a little bit expensive, but at the end we got a wonderful, a wonderful and accurate information that can help us to check the disease and to know uh, And how to can lead the right way. That's absolutely mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So that is the point. Um, so now we can just find that technology is involved in medical field. It's involved in the security field. When you mm -hmm. just, when, when I read, for example, in some international cities in the world that they are controlled by um, cameras in order to protect yes. the and, citizens. And the role of uh, robots also oh, in services. Right, mm -hmm. so in this way we can just see how technology is involved not just in one field in our life. Um, um, I, I keep on saying that if you would like to catch up opportunities, I think that you have to be technologically sophisticated. This is the best way in order to find the best opportunity for you. Yeah, in a, in a digitalized world and with the digitalized generations as well that you teach, right. Right. how will the role of professors actually like differ Right. In a world, yeah. in a conventional world right. before, vis-a-vis -vis right. a right. digitalized uh, generation and right. a digitalized world. I think that this is very critical, and I think that professors play an important role in mm. uh, Let me just give you one example. Um, I am, as you know, I am a professor, and nowadays I apply the smart techniques for teaching. And if you just ask me, how, how, what is that? Oh, uh, tell me more about smart ways for teaching nowadays in the digital 
supplies world. And I'm going to tell you here something very critical. One of the ways that I use it during my education is just to apply Zoom application. So by using such application, this is a smart application. It can be downloaded on my mobile, or my mm. cell phone, and mm. at the same time on the laptop. So I ask all my students at the same time to have to the apply. same application, mm. to download the application, mm. And we can just communicate effectively and efficiently at the same time. What, uh, what are the pros and cons of uh, uh, connecting with the students I think, via a classroom environment right. or through Zoom? I think that when it comes to Zoom, which in another word, uh, in another words, it's called something like the virtual classroom. Yes, it makes it makes the whole process easier. Mm. and it makes it effective. Probably one of the negative ways that I faced during my electronic teaching ways mm. uh, is probably that some students are not aware. So again, back again to the word awareness. Mm -hmm. So they are not, can, just the other day I was talking with They are one not of, keeping pace uh, right. uh, and, with, with technology. And they don't want to use it, and mm. they are making resistance for that. And then, let me just tell you, Terry, just um, um, before, come here a few hours ago I was talking with one of my students and I told her that if you would like to, to get a training training work because I used to make training workshop when it comes to language tests and all of that mm. kind of stuff so I told her that the best way is to use technology and she was not convinced about that then I told her okay let me just go step by step with you download the application I'm gonna help you how to download it and how to use it and once she used the application she found it that this is very easy and then she became convinced about how important it is yes so uh, it gives usually when when you have the service and uh, right right you're quite enthusiastic to continue so you know what mm. so sometimes people need to be convinced about what you're talking about mm. but before being convinced you should show them your passion your sense of passion like no 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 guys it's gonna work mm. it's gonna work in this way believe me and let you try it so once they see the professor so back again because you're just talk talking about the role of the professors they are responsible they should show that sense of passion mm -hmm. that sense of commitment and provide incentives for and, the and here students. we go mm -hmm. incentives and motivation mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. the students are looking at the professors like you are my model and I'm gonna follow you up so if there's something happening positive they will be more or less affected by that yes uh, uh, it's very important to have positivity right. around in, right. in, yeah. in all ways uh, right. among the positive things that happened is this important uh, progress of uh, the uh, transformation digital transformation projects all over the country and uh, the president is following up himself on the progress of, of this, uh, these projects and also of Egypt's uh, transformation into uh, digitalization. Let's watch. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi directed the bodies concerned to apply state-of-the-art technologies in the telecommunications projects underway in the new administrative capital. President al-Sisi's directives came during a meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli and Minister of Communication and Information Technology Amr Talat. During the meeting, President al-Sisi underlined the need to implement the government plans for relocating some ministries and government bodies to the new capital in conformity with globally recognized standards. He added that the new capital should serve as an advanced information hub linking between various state bodies to enhance the government performance. Presidential spokesman Bassem Radi said that the president was briefed on the latest progress in ICT projects, especially those seeking to maximize the benefits of IT and artificial intelligence technologies and digitize government services in cooperation with major global companies involved in the IT and artificial intelligence industries. Meanwhile, Bart outlined the Ministry's efforts to boost digital trade, as well as the electronic system of agricultural holdings known as the Pharma Smart Card, by creating an accurate database for that purpose. The Head of State said that creating comprehensive databases of all information about Egyptians is a matter of national security, 
underscoring the importance of the country's digital transformation efforts. The President said that a major project to digitalize government services will use artificial intelligence technology to allow the government to have a full picture of financial and health conditions of Egyptians, identify their needs and offer proactive services before citizens request or apply for them. <laughs> Well, uh, as we wrap up uh, this episode, I guess a uh, final message we can say on digitalization. I think that it, it's all about it's all about our deep conviction. Uh, it's all about our understanding. It's all about our passion for the changes that's happening in our society. It is something that we have. It is our responsibility to change, to move that, and to convey that to our um, to our people, to our followers, to our students. And we have a huge responsibility, and we should actually be up to our responsibility. And I'm just talking uh, from my personal perspective. I also have a deep belief that Egyptian youth and Egyptian 
students can make something great. And let me just remember here at the end of our talk, Tagreed, um, a statement uh, that came out from um, our late Nobel laureate um, prize, Dr. Ahmed Zouil, um, when he said before that um, Egyptian youth uh, have a great capability, but just them the environment. So let's give them the environment and in this way they're going to make something great in their life. Yeah, I guess the environment is ripe now for uh, creativity and for more to come for our beloved country, Egypt. Tomorrow is definitely uh, better and many happy returns on the uh, anniversary of the new Suez Canal uh, project, the project of all Egyptians. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Tawab, professor at Minofea University, thank you so much for coming to Nile TV tonight always adding uh, info and input. Thank you very much for having me, Tagreed. Always a pleasure. Thank you, ZAV viewers, for joining us. And I'm Tagreed Hussein, thanking you all.